Stand up, wait, 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 wait. All right. Time is disconcerting. Well, lately my intelligence has been insulted. So, look, this, this university is basically closed, you know, well, you know, some of us still have to work, you know, well, not work, I mean, not do our studies. And I'm about, you know, building my, uh, my office space back up you know, where I live now in, in Salamanzi Village. Um, but I still have to come and do certain things, and maybe, maybe some things like this and other research. Anyway, but um, the, the way the university is, uh, I live in Salamanzi, which is a village on the other side of the university, and there's a back gate you go to, you, you traverse a little stream, let's call it a river. <laughs> okay, it's a little, a brook. And, and then, then, you know, there's a back gate, and then, you know, the, uh, lately they've been locking the back gate, which is, which is good because nobody's supposed to be on campus or whatever. Um, uh, otherwise, you have to go all the way around into town, then come through the front. It's like, come on. Anyway, a few days ago, uh, I was coming with, with, with my uh, uh, with, with my research. Um, I don't want to call myself probably an assistant. You know, he says my research associate, and because um, he does the work in Denbaza. And uh, so the guys over there, the security guys out there, talking to a couple of other security guys, and Joe and I'm, you know, waving whatever. And he comes, and he's coming, and he's going, nah, they be good, like that. I'm going like, okay. So he comes to me and I said, look, I got to get in and go to my, my office, you know, show my, my ID card and whatever. And he says, oh, uh, nobody can come through this way. I said, well, well, can we talk? Can I talk to your supervisor? He says, I don't have a number to my supervisor. I said. Well, that doesn't make any sense. Well, you know, don't you have the key? Can you can you open the gate? You know, no. So I'm not told nobody can come through this gate. You know, and so I call. I know some security people. I call one of the security people. I say, hey, what's going on? You got the keys? You know, he said, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll be right there. Where are you? Went this whole thing. Then in, in the meantime, this guy, you know, the guys he was talking to, they disappeared, and he ends up. He does call somebody in the office, right? And so these two guys show up. And they're telling me, uh, well, we were told that nobody can come through here. I said, well, you know, that's fine and dandy, but, you know, uh, let me speak to somebody so we can get this straight. Because basically, I pay fees here, and my ID card gets me on campus wherever I have to get on campus. I'm not going to hot, I'm not going to walk around. So we go to this and dance, and then finally the guy just let me through. Now, what bothers me in this whole thing is that this is a security guy. Well, I'm not putting security guys down, but when people get in, in positions of, of, of Let's call it some kind of power. Then they try to flaunt their power. Now he has no badge. He doesn't give his name. He doesn't no badge or nothing like that. And and it's kind of weird to me that we that students or whoever staff we have to always show our ID badge, but we don't know who's the ID badge of the. Well, look, forget that. That's not what I talked. That that's just that was just fun and games for me, you know. So but we got it straight finally. So well, we got it straight. So I come, I come in now. But here's the thing, here's what's happened lately. When I first came to South Africa in 2003, George Bush was president. And oh Lord, I had to get a lot of Bush jokes. You know, it, was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it wasn't a happy time to be, let's, let's call it a, a North American abroad, you know? Okay. Then Barack Obama, then, then, then 2008, Barack Obama comes in. And you know, the people, they were all of Africa, they was hopeful, oh yeah, hey, you know, the brother president, whatever have you. And uh, after a few, when we realized that basically the, the, the brother president was like, uh, well, I won't say abandoning us, no, betraying, you know, who the people who put him in office, namely, you know, progressive people and black people or, or overwhelmingly, they just did, did nothing for him. And it got worse. And I really started going crazy. I said, not going crazy, but I really started getting um, 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 upset, miffed. Mm -hmm. By the brother president, and one of the things that really bothered me, I and mean, this is before you know killing Gaddafi, you know killing Africans, let's put it that way. But what has America, in, in his tenure, talking about the brother president, what has he done for Africa? But forget black people, not forget. But you know, he's, we we already know he has done nothing for black people in the United States. You know, no reparation. He's given reparation to other groups, but not, 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 not nothing at all. Okay. Then I came across this article. And before the brother president was uh, was president, there was one official military base in Africa. It was in Djibouti, well, because you all don't know which Djibouti is right. It's, it's near Ethiopia. And so, what happened? Let me tell you, Djibouti story is very is very good. She's, Djibouti is on the east side of Africa, and the 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 Gambia, 
Gambia is on the west side of Africa. What happened? The reason why Gambia speaks English and Djibouti speaks French is because you know the colonials they say, hey, I want a, I want a, a, a presence on the east coast, you know, on the east coast of Africa. We want a presence on the west coast of Africa. So they just switched up. So the English uh, got Gambia. That's why they speak English. It's the official language. And and the French got Djibouti. So they could. That's the way the that's the way the you know <laughs> the Anglo white supremacist colonialists roll. Okay. Anyway, so Djibouti was the was the only official base that the United States had. But now they built a, a giant security wall. If I don't you probably can't see this, but all the way from the Seychelles all the way to Senegal, you know these American flags, those are military presence all all Basically, cutting that part of Africa, northern Africa, in half, right, right above the, the, the Sahara, you know, in half. It's amazing. And you know, now we have 50, now we have 54 countries, I think, in Africa, uh, because uh, South Sudan became a country. And you know, Sudan, South Sudan. You know how they broke that up? They broke it up along the oil kind of kind of thing. So I think the South got the oil, and then, well, well, whoever, somebody got the oil out there. So they're always doing this divide and conquer thing. So I'm, so 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 my thing with with the brother president, I'm going like. No, I'm not into that. But just this day, I had to go someplace and I was walking. And, you know, everybody knows that you know, I come from the States. And this guy says to me as I'm walking by, he says, he says, uh, Trump. <laughs> hey, Trump. So I went from being, you know, call Bush to call Obama. Now I got to endure Trump. <sighs> but here's what I'm going to do. Okay. Here's my adjustment. I'm not calling anybody no, no names. You know, we, we have this thing in the States now, you know, we call people like, the people are cooning, clowning, you know, cooning and, and whatever have you. Of course, there's the old standby Uncle Tom, even though it's kind of strange because if you ever read, <laughs> if you ever read Uncle Tom's Cabin, Uncle Tom is not the, the bad guy. Sambo is a bad guy. So, anyway, the point is, this year, I'm going to try my best. I'm not calling anybody any names. I'm not calling, no, no, poly, I'm not calling anybody out of their name. Let's put it that way. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm trying to get more into the Neely Fuller Jr. code. And then when I say call it, I'm not calling anybody names, even if the name fits, unless they want to be called, you know, like a racist or something like that. But I'm not calling anybody any names. I'm going to just keep on staying, staying in my lane. And, 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 and since I had no stake in this uh, whole last presidential election, I basically, well, I, I, I ignore it. Then I'm going like, I'm going to ignore the whole thing as much as I can, sit here and do my work and, and, and see what happens and maybe in a few years I can assess it and policy and change things around around the globe from my base here in the Eastern Cape of Southern Africa. That's me, my base. Me being T from Patterson's taking the train to Tibet. Let you know what I only suspect.